Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we are looking at the Grade 12 RT Prac exam from November 2022 and we have done two videos on question one and two and this is our third video where we're dealing with the OOP question which is question three. So here we've got question three and it's the OOP question or object oriented programming question and we are given the following GUI which is a solar power plant application and this is the program that we're going to interact with some sort of object so this will probably be 3.2 as you can see there we're going to deal with that in 3.2 but 3.1 will be us creating methods for the object so let's go further down we're going to scroll down here so we're going to go to 3.1 they tell us that there's an incomplete object called the T solar power plant and these are the attributes there's a plant code which is a unique code for the solar power plant there's a number of panels installed in the plant the power per panel of each part of each panel in kilowatt and the season during which power will be generated so there's either summer autumn winter or spring and the following code has been provided so we've already got to get plant code to get num panels and get season already those are our accessor methods so let's move to 3.1.1 now we want to write code for a constructor for the method which will receive the plant code the number of panels and the power per panel so there's only three of the four attributes assign the parameter values to the respective attributes and the season is going to be defaulted to summer so let's go to our program so there's our program remember when you are dealing with the object you need to click on the object file that's over there so make sure that you don't do stuff in the main unit you want to get to the object file let's click on it over there so there we go now you can see your attributes that have been declared for you and the methods that have already been declared for us make sure that you put your examination number at the top there so please don't forget to do that and we want to create a constructor our constructors are going to be public so that they can be accessed by the other units we're going to create a constructor Constructor, which you can see that the word goes blue so it's a predefined word in Delphi and we're going to call it create and it takes in three parameters remember it takes in the plant code number of panels and power per panel according to the description but I'm not going to give it the same name as these I'm going to give them slightly different ones so I'm going to call it SP code for the plant code which is a top string and you'll see that the other two parameters are integer and real so I'm going to put a semicolon over there so we're now going to put in I num panels which will be my integer variable and I'll put a semicolon because we We've got another variable which is the real variable so we need to get a power per panel so i'm just going to call this r power of type real and because that's the last one we don't need a semicolon i'll just close the brackets for the parameters and put a semicolon so i'm going to put this all on one line so we can just see what it looks like so you can see over there that's what it looks like constructor create there are our three parameters let's press control shift c and here we are at the code for this particular constructor and we are going to take those values and put them into the fields or the attributes of our object so let's go back here so we're going to say in f we can say control spacebar to be able to get the particular names so the plant code is going to be assigned the value that's from the parameter p code and then we can say f number of panels and that's going to get from r num panels and then we get we get f power per panel and that's going to be get from our power so those are my parameters there and remember it said if you remember correctly that the default for the season will be summer and that is if we look over here if we look at the top here you can see that season is a string so yeah we'll say if season is assigned the value of the string summer so there we go because it pressed Control shift c it didn't put it in the place where it wanted you could move it there if you want to but that's up to you so let's move to the next question the problem unfortunately with these objects is that you can't test anything to see if they work you can test the syntax you can't test anything until you are using it in 3.2 so let's do 3.1.2 write code for the method called increase number of panels that receives a value as a parameter and increments the number of panels by that value so we're just increasing the attribute for the number of panels by whatever the parameter is so it's a method that receives a parameter there's nothing about returning anything so this must be be a procedure so let's go up here to our public methods and we're going to make a procedure which is called increase num panels which is called increase num of panels and it takes in some sort of integer value so i'm going to call this r num of type integer so that's the parameter that we are getting and i'm going to press Control shift c so we can get to the code for it and all we are doing is we are taking the number of panels take whatever's currently in the number of panels 
and add this new number. We're not replacing the number of panels with this new number. We just take that number and add it onto it. And I think that's literally all that needs to be done. There we go. That's easy for Mark. So let's do 3.1.3. Write code for a mutator method called set season that receives a value as a parameter and sets the season to the value received. So this is also a procedure. So we will scroll up to the top here and we will make another procedure called set season, which takes in a parameter which we call S season of top string and we press control shift c and here we are setting the season attribute to whatever this parameter is which is s season and that's literally that's literally a mutator method very simple very easy 3.1.4 write a method called calculate capacity that uses the information that follows to calculate the power generation capacity of the installed panels and returns this result as a real value so because it's returning this is going to be a function there's nothing that says that it comes in there's no value that comes in so there's no parameters i'm going to go here quickly and just declare it so long let's do that part so this is going to be a function and if i remember correctly it was calculate capacity if i remember correctly and it does not take in any parameters but it does return a real value so calculate capacity control shift c so here we are at the code for this particular method let's see what they want us to do the season determines the hours of sunlight per day that can be used so depending on the season which we will get from the season attribute we'll get one of those values and using that value we then calculate the generation capacity so the number of panels we've got as a field the power per panel we've got as a field but the hours we're going to get is going to be based on which season they've got okay so let's first do this part let's first work out the number of hours of sunlight so if you remember that so summer is 10 winter is 6 and then autumn and spring are 8 a piece over here i'm going to make a variable called hours our uh, hours type integer and i'm going to say if the field for season is equal to the text summer if it's equal to summer then my hours is going to equal to 10 if i remember correctly so summer is equal to 10 and then if it's winter it's going to be six so let's use that as an else else if f season is equal to the text winter let's put an if there mr long if the season attribute is equal to winter then our hours is going to equal to the value of six and we could then have another if statement to see if it is autumn or spring and then it's eight i'm going to assume that if it's not winter and it's not summer then it must be one of those two so i'm just going to assume that if it's not one of those two then it must be the hours is equal to eight i'm sure if you are, want to be doubly sure you could say if f season is equal to autumn or if f season is equal to spring then hours equal to eight but i'm going to do that so i've now calculated the hours now what do i need to do i now need to turn this value which is the number of panels times by the power per panel times by the hours per day so let's go do that so we're going to then then just say result because remember with the function you've got a result variable that you need to send back your answer in and we're going to say the number of panels multiplied by the power per panel multiplied by our hours now i don't need to put brackets because it's bot mass they're all multiplied by each other so it should be all fine so there we go i think that's it eight marks very easy eight marks and then 3.1.5 we must write a two string method to return now two strings tend to be functions there's no values that are coming in so this is just going to be a two string that returns the attributes in the following format so i'm literally going to copy this i know you can't do this in an exam because you don't have a digital copy of the question paper i'm going to do this to save some time and let's scroll up and we're going to say okay so let's go function to string there's nothing to take in as a parameter but it does return a string as a value for the function control shift c and there we go and we want to say result or what i like to do is i like to make an s line variable makes my life a bit easier type string and i'm going to construct this s line variable and it's going to equal to something that looks like this i just went and copy and pasted all of that stuff that we had now now okay so let's see what they want us to look like so we want the word plant code and then we actually want the plant code of yes i'm going to say plus f plant code now that's a string so we don't need to convert anything and if you double check here there's no tabs it's just straight away like that so that's fine we don't need to use any hash nines but we do need to use a hash 13 if we want to add this to a brand new line so then i want to put this over here number of panels and then i'm going to add the field which is f number of panels number of panels plus the hash 13 to make a new line 
But remember, number of panels is an integer, and this is a string. So we need to convert from an int to a string. And I will put that like that. So there we go. That's great. And now we're going to put our power on the new line, which is power per panel. And we will then replace power per panel with a plus F power per panel. If I think that's correct, I'm going to add a hash 13. But if you remember correctly, that is a real value. So let's just double check here. We display in the real value. They don't mention anything about how it must look. I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. It's not actually cheating, but I'm going to go look ahead and you see it displays your three decimal values there. And that's all we've really got. So I'm just it doesn't mention anything about how many decimal places let's go back here so because of that i'm just going to leave it as it is i'm not going to convert it to a specific number of decimal places i'm just going to convert it from a float to a string i won't do float to string f because they didn't really specify that and that'll be a plus 13 and then our last one over here is going to be the season which will be the text season and then at the end we will add the season attribute and then i will close it there so let's just double check we've got variables plus a hash 13 plus the next line and so on that's all working nicely and then this is all in s line we still need to say result is equal to s line don't forget that part if you're going to use an s line variable make sure that you do that final step of saying hey let's send this s line as our answer so there we go so we don't know if they work we're going to test it now when we go to the next part of the question but i can run it to test if there are any syntax errors Oh, there we go. So it compiles, so we didn't make any spelling mistakes. So there we go, you know, at, at least because its syntax is correct. But we will go test it now when we go use this. If you get time, you can cut and paste them into the relevant place if you want, or move those down to where they are. But just for time's sake, let's move on to question 3.2. And we're going to come here to 3.2. So now we're going to use that object. So first thing I do is I just double check when I go look at the code. I just double check that we have the object added to the top. Now I'm going to scroll across here. I don't see solar PowerPoint underscore U. So let's looks further down oh there it is so there is our users of solar power plant let's call you and they've created an object plant so there we go so let's do 3.2.1 over here so what do they want me to do so we're going to use our obj plant object of type solar plant object and we're going to write code that will extract the plant code from the edit box the number of panels on the spinner and the power from the edit box and we're going to use this to create a new power plant in the object and then we're just going to display the two strings so that's quite simple so we're just going to get those values into an object and then use the two string so let's go do that quickly so you can do variables if you want i'm going to go straight away into those particular values so i'm going to say the power plant obj plant now this is the mistake that a lot of people make they say oh we're using the constructor so we say dot create this is the only time you don't do it this way you say first of all is equal to what type of object is it you can look over here if you're not too sure you made it a t solar power plant so you can say it's equal to a t solar power plant and then do the dot create this is the only method that you do it with for now the others you can just say the obj plant dot whatever the method is but for this is the one exception please don't forget that because otherwise it doesn't always work so we now need a plant code where are we getting the plant code from we're getting it from edt321 so that's where we're getting the plant code from so we're just going to put straight away edt and press control spacebar so we can see it's that one we're getting from that one edt q321 and that's the code one so the one with the code so i'm going to type edt control space bar and we can see oh we want the code one and what property the dot text property now that's going to go and fetch it as a string so we don't need to convert anything that's great now the next parameter i'm going to put it on a new line just so we can see it the next value if you remember from our constructor our constructor needs the number of panels next so where are we getting the number of panels from we're getting the number of panels from this spin edit so sed so we can now say sed control space bar and it's the spin edit it's the three two one spin edit how do we get the value well i just gave you a clue it's the dot value and that is an integer so we don't need to convert that so i'll put a comma so if you're not too sure you can put it one after each other over here so you can see what it looks like if i just scroll over here you can see that it's doing it exactly like it should be doing and then the last value is the power for the panels and that's from edt and that's the power value so we're going to say that one dot text now this is where it gets a little bit tricky so I'll close the bracket there remember this is a real value you remember there we go there's a real value and this is going to return a string so we want to convert this one from a string to a flow 
float so that it can convert this value to the appropriate one and that will create our object you could put these into separate variables if you want to and then use the variables there either one will work i'm just doing that to save time so we have created our object we've used the values we've instantiated our new object now we're just going to display it in the rich edit so i'm going to say rich edit q3.lines.add and we are displaying obj plant dot and we have that two string function if i remember there it is, there it is two string function so let's test to see if it works so here's where we really will determine if our code is working for those methods. So I click on it and do we get the exact same values as they want over there? I'll scroll down 1.3. Yep, it looks like it's all correct. Yep, it looks like it's all correct. So let's go on to the next question, which is 3.2.2. Now for this button, let's go over here. We're going to go to that particular button. There we go. That one, increase the panels. And we want to extract the value of the number of panels to be added from the spin edit and call the increase method and call the relevant object method to display the value in the rich edit. So we're going to get the plant code, which will be displayed like that. And we're going to get the number of panels. I think that was created for us, if I remember correctly. We didn't have to do those methods, but we did have to do the increased number of panels. So let's come here to this part. So first of all, we're going to say the object plant because it's a global variable we can use it here dot increase number of panels we've got a procedure so we can just call it and what are we increasing about whatever's in that spin edit if i remember it was a spin edit yes it's sed control space bar and it's the q322 question the value property so that is already an integer so it'll take that value it'll update it now we need to update the rich q3.lines.add and we want to display the word plant code with the plants code so we can say the word plant code and where do we get the plant code from well obj plant dot get plant code that was made for us and that's a string so we can just put it like it is and then on a new line lines add we're going to put in the text number of panels and then we're going to get the number of panels number of panels colon and then we're going to add obj plant dot get number of panels now you'll notice that it is an integer so we need to convert this from an integer to a string the whole thing so that it can fit into this rich edit okay so there we go. let's test it so remember when you are doing this test you can't just click on it because you haven't instantiated the object yet so first instantiate the object then we can increase the number of panels and there you can see it's gone to 18 if i do five more it should go up to 23 so there we go it is working thank you let's move on to the next question the number of hours for the generation of the power differs per season the user must select the season from a combo box extract the season set the season to our object and then use this to string to redo the value so we're going to display the information updated so that seems quite simple so let's go to our question 3.3 we're going to get it from this combo box combo box 3.2 so we're going to click here so we're going to say our object plant dot set season and what season are we setting we setting to whatever's in the combo box combo box q32 and how do we get the value from it it's just the text value and once i've done that all I need to do is to update the rich edit dot lines or add with a new two string obj plant dot two string. We don't need to clear it because it's already been cleared for us. So let's test that. So we can instantiate the object, but if I change it to winter, we should see that winter has changed. Updates, there we go, winter's changed. Fantastic. So that's great. So we're doing that. And then 3.2.4, I think that's the last one, if I'm correct. Yes. So the maximum capacity of the power can be generated by the panels must be calculated. Write the code to display the following. We're going to display the max generation per year of that particular season. So we're going to have to get that from set season and the result of the calculate capacity converted with a unit also displayed. So we want it to look something like that. So we're going to display the season's name in this text and then we're going to use the calculate capacity to get that value. So what I'm going to do here is just do the first line. So we can say rich edit q3 dot lines dot add and we are wanting to do the text maximum generation capacity per day i'm going to do that for you so i wrote the text out for you but i just wrote it exactly like it is but we don't want the word winter we want whatever the season is so i still want that colon at the end so i want to change the middle of the string so i'm going to put a quote quote so that we break the first string and start the second string and then i'm going to put a plus plus in between those two quotes and then here i can put the string that i want to add that's a variable or that's a method so i'm going to obj plant dot get 
season so we can get the season get which season it is so we can display that value there so that's great and now we need to work out the capacity i'm gonna actually make a variable of type real of type real and i'm going to say r cap is equal to whatever the object is dot calculate capacity so it's going to go calculate it and bring that value into r cap so we can now display it in the rich edit q3 dot lines dot add and we just need to display it like it is with the kw at the end so we're going to put in our cap and then we're going to add the text space kw like that but remember this is a real and they don't mention anything about the number of decimal places so we'll just display it as it is so i'm just going to display this from a float to a string so that it can fit into this rich edit so let's see what that does Boom. So if I compare it to our results, we want winter, by the way. So make sure that we've got that. So let's just test it. So we're going to instantiate. I don't know if they've increased the panels because that's going to affect the calculation, but we need to change it to winter. So let's change it to winter. Let's update the season. So it's winter. Let's calculate. Okay. So now if we increase the panels to three and we update the season just so we can see. So it's 18. Let's do the calculation now. There we go. So you have to do the increase the panels to get the same result. So there we go. So that seems to be right. And that's the last question. That's all of the OOP questions. So there we go. So that's what's quite simple. There was no text file in this one. It seemed quite straightforward and quite easy to do. Again, reminder to do your object in the object file or your fields over there. Make sure that you create your methods as public normally and that you've used all of them. Have we used all these methods? I always check if I've used it all of them. They will never ask you to create a method that you don't use. And I remember using all of these. So there we go. So we've done all of them. That's great. So there we go. And then you use them in here. And remember to put your name at the top of both the files your exam actually your examination number at the top of both files so don't forget that okay so there we go let's go into the final question all data files and links to the other videos are in the video description so click over there for the links and click on that subscribe button it would really be great if you support the channel and share us with your friends so we can help them as well and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way